Is an exercise science degree or exercise science major worth it? That's what we're gonna be talking today, but before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers, and opportunities that'll lead you to success, and we also go over how you can avoid some of the common financial mistakes that so many people end up falling for. If that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, like most of you haven't, because only around 20% of you do, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you know never miss out. So what exactly is an exercise science degree? What is it all about? This degree will basically prepare students for a bunch of different science related and fitness related careers. These are going to be occupations that of course promote health as well as physical fitness. There's going to be quite a bit of kinesiology, biological science, nutrition, as well as physiology. Now exercise science and the fitness industry in general is extremely popular. You can see this with all the YouTube channels that have millions and millions of subscribers. And so it's not surprising to see that 25,000 people graduate with this degree every year. That's a lot. This is one of the most popular degrees. And some of the most popular careers that people end up going into are going to be exercise physiologist, athletic trainer, and PE educational teacher. So let's talk about salary or earning potential of this degree. With an exercise science degree, you can expect to make around $38,000 a year starting out and $61,000 in mid-career pay. You can compare that to a really high-paying degree like petroleum engineering or a really low paying one like recreational therapy. And you'll see that this one is a little bit above the lowest one, but not much. Now one career path you might go down and a lot of people wanna go down this career path is becoming a personal trainer. So a fitness trainer is gonna make around 40,000 a year, which is $19 per hour. And you only need to get a high school degree generally to get into it. Jillian Michaels, for instance, probably the most famous personal trainer in the world does not have a degree. Bob Harper, as well. Another really famous personal trainer doesn't have a degree. I think you see what I'm getting at here. There's tons of different examples of successful personal trainers who don't have a degree. A lot of them don't have any degree, never mind having an exercise science degree specifically. And the truth is a lot of people who hire a personal trainer don't really care all that much about your knowledge. It's kind of a sad truth. They don't even care about your accolades if you're on TV calling yourself an expert. All people really care about is the results that you get them and how much you can motivate them to get in better shape. Now, one other career path you might go down is becoming an exercise physiologist. And this one makes around 49,000 a year, which is $23 an hour. Now, all degrees out there make around $2.4 million over a lifetime, according to the Census Bureau. And exercise science is a biological science, which makes on average around 2.3 million over a lifetime. That's below average, and exercise science is one of the lower ones in that group of degrees of biological sciences. So one of the good things is if you are able to become a personal trainer, that's one of those careers out there that's relatively entrepreneurial where you kind of get what you put in. There's physical trainers on YouTube, for instance, that make millions of dollars a year. So it's one of those careers, kind of like a real estate agent, for instance, that's going to be high risk, but also high reward. However, overall, for most of the people who graduate with this degree, it's not going to pay all that well. I'm going to give this one a score of five out of 10. Next, we're going to be talking about satisfaction, and I break this one up into to job satisfaction as well as meaning. Meaning is how much you think your job positively impacts the world and job satisfaction is how much you enjoy doing your job on a day-to-day -day basis. Which if you compare that to a really good one like radiation therapy is 91% and a really bad one like plastics engineering technology is 31%. One career path you might go down is athletic trainer. And for that one, the meaning score is 77% and the job satisfaction score is 78%, which again is well above average. Compare that to a really good one like clergy or a really bad one like a parking lot attendant. Now, I didn't know whether to classify this one as a health science degree or as a science degree, but health science degrees are the fifth least regretted type of degree, whereas science degrees like physical science and biological science are the second most regretted. So it's really hard to say which one is which, but what you can say is it's not so easy for you to get a job with just a bachelor level degree. Now, with that being said, it's gonna have a lot to do with factors that are completely outside the scope of this video. It's gonna be totally subjective and what matters to one person might not matter to another person. For instance, for some people, salary is gonna be the most important thing, whereas for other people, maybe you're like a minimalist or something, salary isn't gonna matter that much. It's also gonna change depending on where you live, the company you work for, the industry you work in, who you work with, what kind of pace the environment is. Is it fast paced? Is it not fast paced? 
Is it a leadership position or is it not a leadership position? All kinds of different things are gonna change your job satisfaction. But overall, I'm gonna give this one a pretty good score of eight out of 10. Now, when it comes to demand, when you look at a personal trainer, for instance, there are a lot of them out there. There's 373,000 and it's growing at 15%, which is much faster than average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's gonna be 57,000 jobs that are created. But again, you only need a high school diploma in order to get into this one, generally speaking. So you're gonna be competing with a lot of other people for those jobs. And I'm not really surprised there that this one is so popular. Personal trainers are becoming extremely popular. I mean, I'm thinking about getting one myself, especially with the uh, quarantine belly that I've put on, or at least I will whenever the gym's open. About what, 20 or 30 years? Another career you might go down is becoming an exercise physiologist and they are growing at around 11%, which is much faster than average as well. However, again, there's not that many jobs out there, only around 19,000, meaning over the next 10 years, there's gonna be 2,200 new jobs that are created. And this is a very popular degree where tons of people are graduating with it every year because they're so passionate about exercise and it's just simple supply and demand. There's not gonna be enough job openings for all of those people. So one test that I like to do is to type into mom monster.com exercise science degree and you'll see that only 709 jobs pop up. For a computer science degree, you're gonna see 141,000, and for anthropology, one that's not very good, you're gonna see 800. So this one is actually below the lowest bar. It's worse than the one that I use as an example of one that's not very good. And that's not a good sign. That's way worse. Now I'll admit that's not a perfect test by any means, don't get me wrong. But overall, when it comes to getting a bachelor's degree for this one, there's not gonna be very much demand. I'm gonna give this one a score of four out of 10. Next, we're gonna be talking about X factors and that's anything that didn't make it into the other list. So for instance, we're gonna be talking about automation, how easy it is to outsource, how flexible the degree is, how flexible different career paths are, the skills that you learn and how valuable they are. So let's classify this one as a biological science degree and over a lifetime, you're gonna make around $2.3 million. That's a little bit lower than the average of $2.4 million for all different types of degrees and all different types of occupations. So generally speaking, biological science degrees are pretty average when it comes to how much money you make over a lifetime. And it gets even a little bit worse when you consider the fact that many people who get a science degree end up going to grad school, getting a master's or a doctorate, which means they have more investment, both time as well as money in many cases. And of course, if you get a master's or a doctorate, you're probably going to earn more money, but at the same time, it's likely going to take a lot more time and you might end up deeper in student loan debt. Now, when it comes to the skills that you learn, I couldn't find a skill that perfectly matches up here. The closest one that I found was physical therapy, and that had a rating of 66 out of 100 on the skills index, whereas, you know, something like software engineering, that's really good, is 88 out of 100, and industrial sewing is eight. So physical therapy ranks really high, but I'm pretty sure they're more referring to the career of physical therapist. That probably doesn't apply nearly as much as exercise science, although quite a few exercise science majors end up going on and becoming physical therapists. So when it comes to the skills there, I think obviously exercise science is a very, very valuable skill to learn. If you're able to keep yourself healthy throughout your lifetime, first of all, you're gonna have a much better life in general, you're gonna be happier, you're gonna live longer, etc. And it probably won't directly result in you making more money. You know, exercise science isn't a super respected degree by any means, but indirectly, it'll probably result in you making more money and having more success. Now, another thing that's pretty good here is the likelihood of automation is gonna be relatively low. It's probably not going to be automated or outsourced. I mean, think about it. People are always going to want to work one-on-one -on -one or maybe you know one-on-five, like one person with a very small group when they're trying to get exercise. This is why companies like CrossFit are so popular because a lot of people really enjoy the camaraderie and the competition and just being around other people, whereas working out on your own is a little bit boring. Now with exercise science, especially if you become a trainer, there is gonna be pretty good opportunities for you to start your own business. It's sort of like a real estate agent where it's kind of high risk, high reward. You might be a real estate agent that doesn't make hardly any money at all, or maybe you just sell a house every couple of years, just from your family or your friends, people that you know. I would assume that there's probably an extremely high failure rate with people who try to start their own businesses as trainers. However, if you are successful, you can charge hundreds 
hundreds of dollars an hour in order to train people. But the truth here is most of the jobs that are good that you would get into with this type of degree are gonna require additional schooling, going to physical therapy school, for instance. And there's many jobs out there that people are going for that you don't actually have to have this degree in order to get into. Additionally, it's probably not going to be a very well-respected degree. So for instance, if you got an engineering degree and then you decided, you know what, I don't wanna be an engineer. There's tons of different careers out there that you can go into just because of how well-respected it is. Let's say you got an accounting degree, for instance, and you decided, I don't wanna be an accountant. Well, first of all, there's like a million different types of accounting jobs. And then second of all, there's tons of other types of careers that you can go into with an accounting degree. Business degrees tend to be extremely flexible. Unfortunately, exercise science doesn't really have either of those things going for it. So when it comes to X factors, I'm gonna have to give this one a five out of 10. So the pros here are you're probably gonna have a very high job satisfaction rating. You'll also likely stay in shape, which is really good. It'll make you happy overall, and it'll probably lead you to having more success. And it can be a really good stepping stone degree where you're gonna learn a lot about the body if you're thinking about majoring in something in healthcare. The cons here are that it's gonna be relatively low income for a lot of different careers. The jobs that require a bachelor's degree generally are going to be very saturated. There's just way more people graduating than the number of jobs out there. And a lot of the higher paying careers are gonna require further study. So overall, I'm gonna give this one a 5.5 out of 10. Now, like I always say, this is extremely subjective. For one person, it might be 10 out of 10. For another person, it might be one out of 10. I think a lot of people are gonna argue that although a lot of physical trainers out there don't have a degree, more of them should have a degree because they'd probably know what they're doing better. It'd be a lot less injuries and all that sort of thing. And then, hey, I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm just presenting the facts to you guys and you can do what you want with them. If you still want to go down this career path, you know, there's something that you're looking for, just make sure that you plan it out and you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Talk to people that are in the career path that you want to go down. They've maybe gotten the degree and ask them what you should do in order to stand out and increase your chances of success. They'll probably say something like getting internships, work experience, learning extra skills, networking, getting actual, you know, work experience is a really big one with this. And just kind of some food for thought here, uh, stuff that I researched that I didn't necessarily put in the script. You could become a personal trainer, a gym manager. You could become a teacher. You could also work for the government. If you wanna to go to extra school, you could become a healthcare worker. There's a lot of great healthcare opportunities out there. So one obvious example is if you wanted to become a physical therapist, that would make a lot of sense for you to get an exercise science degree. So if your plan is to become a physical therapist, this one could make sense for you, but I think just overall, the recommendation that I give is for people to make sure that they secure the bag with their undergraduate degree. And the reason for this is because plans change all the time. I swear, when I was first in undergrad when I was taking all these like chemical you know chemistry classes biology classes etc it seemed like everybody was a pre-med major most people thought that they knew what they wanted to do but they ended up changing their mind so it's always good to have a backup plan and getting a degree in undergrad where you know for sure that you can get a job is a good idea even if you end up deciding that you want to go to grad school at least it's your choice and it's not something that you have to do there's a big big difference there but overall if you want help finding a perfect college degree for you check out my college degree ranker down in the description below. It's going to be in my Patreon where I upload exclusive content. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead and gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. Especially if you've gotten an exercise science degree. Share this video with all of your friends and definitely do not forget to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.